to be able to to have got up to see another day and also to you know to have another birthday and but this is you know the thing about it when i i, I pray i pray about you know the year i've learned to do this you know it, it wasn't always something that i did but i have learned especially more intensely in the last several years um, my 2020 birthday was crazy you know, it was one that I just won't ever forget, you know, and one that I'll, I'll just, I mean, man, my 2020 was, it was ridiculously crazy. And I mean, and I mean, you know, I had one of the biggest, you know, birthday parties. It was like somewhat of a blessed birthday party, but people didn't know what was happening behind the scenes. It was devastating um, behind the scenes. And then, you know, birthday last year, it was, um, you know, a good birthday, but it was the first birthday that I wouldn't hear baby call to tell me happy birthday usually um you know early morning she gonna try to get me before anybody else that was just her thing she gonna try to make sure she you know was the first one i know she's you know screaming now saying happy birthday you know it's because whatever so, but so it was the first one of not hearing her voice and what i have learned is is to um to make sure because we do not know what a next day holds, you know, even though we have prophetic words that come forth in our life, even the Bible tells you that they prophesy in part. So it means they don't tell you the whole situation. Like, for instance, a prophecy may come forth in your life to tell you that you're going to be a millionaire, but it doesn't tell you that you're going to sleep in your car for three months, you know. Or you're going to be homeless for a year or however going in that journey, you know, or to, to get to that millionaire status. So it's only a prophecy in part. And the part is, is the part that gives the hope. That's the part that is released unto us, but it doesn't give the full details. So therefore, we don't know what tomorrow holds, what, you know, things are going to happen. But I will say, you know, so I always find myself, you know, one of the things that I, you know, I talked to the Lord about when I woke up to see that I had made it to, you know, my birthday. I said, hey, God, you know, uh, whatever, you know, for this year, I, I, I need you to just please, you know what I'm saying, make sure that, you know, you and I are together with it. I mean, through good and bad. I want you to, I want to make sure that you and I are together. That is the thing I need to solidify. I need to solidify the fact that you and I are together. I, I don't, you know, and you know, some would say, well, you know, God is in everything. Listen, let me tell you something. God is omnipresent, which means he's everywhere, but God is not manifest everywhere. God is not manifest everywhere. There are some places that are rejecting the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is there, but it cannot do anything because they don't want it to do anything. They would much rather have the opposition or the, the spirit of the enemy to take president in that place. But I said to him, no, I want you to go with me. You know, I want you to be with me through this year, through the good and through the bad, you know, whatever, through highs and lows, through ups and downs through ins and outs you know what i'm saying because you don't ever know what life is going to bring you have things that go about you know and and it takes turns things happens you know uh you, you just you just don't know you'll see some people today and you know and you probably won't see them by the end of the year uh, however the case may be you know things just it things happens and so i said i want you to to you know just just the, if, if i can get this from you i understand that your promises is yea and amen. I understand that. But the promise that I want from you is not that you promise to, to give me, you know, a Bentley because I, I can do without that. I love Toyotas. So, I, you know, that's not, that's, that's not the promise I want from you. But the promise that I want from you is that you will see me through. That's what I want. I want to make sure that every day that my day is with you, that my night is with you, that I'm, I'm able to, to go through through whatever I have to go through in life, I want to make sure that I go through that with you. And so listen, I, I'm saying this to the Lord and I hear the Lord when I come running in here to sit down, to get ready to, to do prayer. And I hear the Lord and I say, okay, God, listen, we need, we got to take action real quick here. You know what I'm saying? I had one, my shirt was all up. I had to pull my shirt down. I was like, thank God I ain't on camera because you know, I'm at the shirt all up and I realized it. So I had to pull my shirt down, but I'm steady saying in myself, God, I need to know what I need to say to the people give me something and the Lord speaks John 16 to me 
Now, I have not pre-read it, but he speaks John 16, and I skimmed the first couple of verses, and I realized what God wants me to say to us this morning. When I tell y'all God is amazing to me, and I so love the Holy Spirit because of the fact that when you are yielded to the Holy Spirit, it does not take God long to do anything. And I said that so that you will know that whatever you speak, it does not take God long to do it as long as it's spoken in the Holy Spirit. As long as it's according to the will of God, it does not take God long. The only reason why Daniel prayed was hindered was because the prince of Persia, which was a, a synonym of Satan, withstood against it to keep it from coming to pass. But the Lord told Daniel, he said, hey, son, I answered the very moment that you prayed. It doesn't take long for me to do what I do when you are in covenant with me, when you are praying according to my will. It does not take long for me to do what I do. So therefore, it doesn't take God long, y'all, to do what it is that he does and so he said John 16 so let's go in the scripture to see exactly what it is that he wants to pull out of this I do have a focus thought and the focus thought that I'm going to give y'all which every Tuesday there is a focus thought that's given during prayer and that that focus thought is governed from one Tuesday to the next Tuesday which means that I'm going to stand on that focus thought for us covering us from one Tuesday to the next Tuesday, and we keep building. We just keep growing. And so this is the focus thought. Two words. I got two words to say to y'all in the focus thought. Those two words is pay attention. Those are the two words. Pay attention. That's what I heard in my spirit. When I sat here, I heard John 16, looked at, skimmed through two verses in the, che- in the text, and heard pay attention. Pay attention. Listen, John 16 and verse 1 says this here. These things, this is Jesus, the man himself talking. He says, these things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. You should not be offended. Offended. Look at the word off ended that you shall not be offended. Nothing is going to take you off course. Lord, help me this morning, please. Nothing is going to take you off course. God help us. Nothing is going to take you off course. He said, I'm speaking these things to you that you do not get off course. I want you, Lord Jesus, to stay the course. I, I want you to stay the course. So don't you get offended. Verse 2 says, they shall put you out of the synagogue. Mm. They shall put you out of the synagogues. You know, this is for the people that, that don't understand, you know what I'm saying, about having to disfellowship. This was actually not a disfellowship. This was um, the disciples being put out of the synagogue. So it's a whole different type. But there's two types of disfellowship. Is when uh, uh, they put you out of the synagogues, which is sin will draw you out of the synagogue. And then also... <clears throat> being disfellowshipped out of the synagogue, which is a whole nother message. So, but please understand that you can be disfellowshipped out of the synagogue. You know, a synagogue does not need sin all running rain, raining and running rampant all in it. And I do understand that folks say stuff like, you know, well, you know, that's what the house of God is supposed to be for. The house of God is supposed to be for people to do better. That's right. Listen to what you said. It is for people to do better. But if they choose not to do better, then you disfellowship, you know, and, and there is scripture references to give a reason for that to take place. So, but that kills all of the religion that we that we have been embedded in. So he says here, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yeah, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he does God's service. Check that out. Pay attention. Pay attention. He says, whosoever killeth you is going to think that they're doing God's service. I, I, I need y'all to let that rest in your head. He says, they're literally going to think that they're doing the right thing. They're going to put their mouth on you, and they're going to think they're doing the right thing. They're literally going to literally desire to see your home fail, desire to see the ministry that God has given you fail, and they're going to think they're doing the right thing. This is Jesus telling them. They're going to think they're doing the right thing. Now, you talk about having a distorted mind. 
You talk about literally having a a a confused mind. That's a confused mind. Verse 3 says, and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. He gives the reason as to why they're going to do it. He says, because they don't know the Father and they do not know me. So now it goes back to what I told y'all earlier. God is everywhere, but he's not manifest everywhere. It clearly says they do not know the Father, but you know the Father is there. Because the Father is omnipresent, which means he's all, he's everywhere. He's omnipotent, which is all seeing and all knowing. So he says, he does, they, Jesus says that they don't know the Father and they don't know me. Verse 4, he says, but these things have I told you. I told y'all pay attention. Pay attention. Today, I'm going to dedicate my birthday to us paying attention. I'm going to dedicate my service, my intercession, my time to cover us for us being people that pays attention. I'm going to give that. I'm going to give that to us for us to be people that pay attention. I'm going to give that. I'm serious. That is my birthday request today is that God would cover us that we would be people that pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. So it says, but these things have I told you that when the time shall come, you may remember what I told you of them. He says, listen, when it happened, you're going to remember what I said to you. So what he's saying is, is it's sure to happen. It's sure to happen. Just as sure it's going to go down. And these things I have said unto you at the beginning because I was with you. Now, I need to put emphasis on that part there so that we get it. He says, I said this to you at the beginning. So listen, let me tell you something. God will always show you, Father, I love you this morning, man. I hear you talking loud and clear. God will always show you who a person is in the beginning. It's going to be something you're going to see. I can recall... I can recall precisely saying some particular things to an individual, and I'd be gone if I don't see the manifestations of it. From the beginning, Jesus said, I'm telling you from the beginning what you're going to deal with. So that's why I say pay attention. Pay attention. Because if he tells us from the beginning what we're going to deal with when it comes, we won't be caught off guard. We won't be discombobulated. I love the Holy Spirit. We won't be all off kilted. He says, listen, I'm telling you this from the beginning. He says, because I was with you. Because I was with you. Okay. So next verse he says, but now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you ask me, where goest thou? He says, there's going to be a time of separation from us. And you're going to have to live by what I've told you. Can I just encourage you this morning to let you know that on this journey of living for God, that happens. There will be a time where it seems as though the Spirit of God is not there necessarily, but only the words that God has said. Because that is a time of having to live, to walk by, live by faith. Having to live by, as the scripture says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So that is having to live by what? He has said, he says, I told y'all this from the beginning because there's going to come a time where this is going to manifest and you're going to have to remember that what I have said to you. And so I want to say, God, I love you this morning. I want to say to you all, pay attention. Pay attention. I literally speak that into your spirit. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention now. Pay attention. 
Don't only just pay attention to people that you 